Hey everyone, welcome back to another video of Hant Will Plays. Today we're playing It Lives Beneath by Choices. Chap uh, chapter 14. The last video, uh, the police station at the, the, the police chief is Kazakh's Cornered. I have a feeling this is going to be just like It Lives in the Woods. The ending for it. Because... Abhirio, who's another YouTuber I know, um, s may put up a theory. Like, I really hope this doesn't end up the same th the same way as um, as it lives in the woods did. Like, where the main character sacrifices himself of to save his friends. Where the main character has to sacrifice himself to save his fr save his friends. And the main character ends up being a monster. Uh, I don't know. But anyway. Let's just begin this. Alright. You and your friends venture deeper into the tunnels of the dam. And put an end to this once and for all. Well, I hope we can. You stand stunned in the tunnels below the dam, and staring down the barrel of Chief Kelly's pistol. Okay. See? No. Abe, what are you doing? Parker, all of you stand down. Jo Josephine's got to be stopped. Anthony's in the way. If you think I'm going to stand by while you shoot my grandkid, Abe, please... Tell me you're not really going to. You're not a murderer. You're a good man. Sometimes good men need to do bad things for the greater good. What? No, they don't. I'm sorry, son, but there's no other way. <sighs> or maybe I can't think of a here. I can't think of a good person. I can't think of a good person that done something bad for the greater good. I don't know. I'll figure it out. But, anyway, let's continue. Kelly sighs down the barrel at you, and his finger starts to tighten on the trigger. Yes, there is. Huh? Parker lunges forward and seizes Kelly's wrist, trying to wrestle the gun away. Don't fight me beyond this, Abe. I'm trying to save us both here. Stop making this harder than it's gotta be. Crack. Parker's elbow slams into Kelly's face and stumbles back, blood dripping from his nose. Ooh. Parker's hand is steady as he levels the gun as Ellie. I'm sorry, Ave, but you gotta but you gotta be taught a lesson. Parker, what Parker flips the gun around and begins you dismantling it. This just isn't the way to help your community, sir. Upholding the law, being an example for others, that's how you got that's how you make a difference. I suggest you take a good look at yourself and ask if this is really what you want to be. The gun stripped to the if to just the frame. Parker flips it back around and holds it out to Kelly. Now, I hope you've you've learned something today. Vincent, finish the ritual. It's time to end this. Nodding grimly, Vincent brings the knife toward Elliot's throat once more. No! Was that Anthony? Anthony, it's us. Is that? What's Robbie doing here? Not... Not a second after, stumbles. Oh, wait. Wait. Was Robbie with us? I don't know. Not a second after, Robbie stumbles into the tunnel. He's followed by Danny, and Logan, and Tom. Thank goodness. We thought we'd never find you. Anthony, we need to get out of here now. We're not going anywhere until Vincent gets his hands off my little brother. No, seriously, we need to. Tom's voice is drowned out drowned out by a haunting little howl that echoes down the hall. 
O. A pack of monsters surges out of the shadows, eyes blazing and teeth bared. <laughs> Vincent, take that! But you've already leaped forward, taking advantage of the distraction to dodge around Craig and grab, grab Vince's knife hand. Run! Grabbing Elliot by the arm, you yank him out of Vincent's grasp and plow him and plow past him toward an empty side tunnel beyond. Stop them! We can't! Oh! One of the rotting bear creatures tackles Vincent to the water. Vincent! Ashton and Kelly rush forward to help him while while the creature while the cra while the Craig while the Craig creature Oh lum lumbers forward to hold back the rest of the monster's pack. Mom Dad I go, Imogen. Imogen runs after you. The rest of your group follows close behind, the echoes of battle fading into the distance. Did they just die? Chapter 14 Under Pressure uh, I was just thinking of that song Under Pressure Pushing Down the Street Okay it was from the Happy Feet 2 movie. Under pressure. Okay. <clears throat> I was that was a song. You find your way way to a closed off service compartment, taking shelter and a much needed rest. I think we're safe for now. Thank God. I don't think I could run any more after any anymore or if my life depended on it. Everyone collapses exhausted onto hunks of rusted machinery scattered around the room. Across the room, Robbie takes off his sweater and drapes it over Elliot's shoulders. Thanks. You lean close to your friends, dropping your voice so as not to be heard by Robbie and Elliot. What's he doing here? What's he doing here? Apparently, the society was guarding him. When they left, when they left to find Elliot, he followed them. We found him wandering around the tunnels. Elliot looks up at Robbie, maybe with a frown. You shouldn't have come. What are you talking about? It's dangerous down here. You could get hurt, or, or worse. Elliot, if you think I could have just sat around while you were down here, then you're even crazier than I thought. Elliot suddenly throws his arms around him. Robbie makes a startled sound, but soon melts. Okay, okay, you don't need to think. Anthony, can I talk to you for a private for, for a sec? Uh, sure. Ah, dang it. I feel like we couldn't access the clothing thing. He leads you a short distance away from the others where you can talk without being heard. I, well, there are some things I think ought to be said. Things I haven't gotten a chance to say. As soon as I saw you and your brother, I wanted to tell you all about tell you all about all this. The society, the monsters, Josephine. So why didn't you? The truth is, I was afraid you'd judge me for having been a part of the society or not having stopped them when I had the chance. I could I could I could live with you hating me. I couldn't live with you knowing I was a failure. I suppose you think I acted the coward, acted the coward. But there it is. I think you did what you thought was right. You weren't trying to protect yourself. You were trying to protect us too. Trust me. I know what it's like to want. What it's like to want to keep someone safe by keeping them in the dark. You're too wise for your age, kid. Seen too much. I wish life hadn't been so rotten to you. Grandpa stands and stretches his joints popping. Well, I've said my piece. Now I've now I figure I should just get out of your hair. You're leaving? Why? 
I'm not a young man anymore, Anthony. I can't hold my own against monsters and knife-wielding fanatics. But what I can do is get Elliot and his friend out of harm's way. You're right. That's probably for the best. Thank you. And Grandpa nods, then waves to get El Robbie and Elliot's attention. What's up? Come on, boys. We're headed out. Wait, what? I'm taking you home where it's safe. I'm not going to run home while Anthony and everyone else are fighting for their lives. Scooter, I care more about you than this whole town. Keeping you safe is always going to be my first priority. And that means as long as you're here, I can't do what I need to do. Because all I care about is keeping you safe. Elliot's face twists with anger and it looks like he's about to object again. And then his eyes fill with tears and he jogs over to wrap you in a fierce tight hug. Don't die, Goober. I promise. You create your little brother's bony body by against your against your own, wondering if it's the last time you'll ever hold her. Hold him. I'll try not to. You take care of yourself, Scooter. I'll see you again before you know it. Promise? Promise. It's always a promise. After a long moment, Elliot lets you go and crosses back to your grandfather and takes Robbie's hand in his own. You ready to go? Ready if you are. Attaboy. They walk over to the door and your grandpa yanks it open. He looks back, raising his voice to carry across the vaulted chamber to you. Thanks, grandpa. You wave to them as they shuffle out of the room, their footsteps echoing against the crooked walls. You return to your friends already deep in discussion. What we ought to do is come up is to come up with a plan. Right. We gotta think out, out our next moves logically. Let's start with what we know. Josephine isn't thinking clearly. She's lashing out because she's in pain. Because of what the society did to her. That's right. Cool. So what the heck are we supposed to do about it? Aside from trying to die, uh, die not to die horribly. We have to get to the viewing chamber and free Josephine. And we've got to keep you away from the society, Anthony. If they get hold of you, they'll try to use your blood to complete their binding ritual. Okay, so how are we going to find, find our way to this viewing chamber? These tones are like a maze. If what Arthur said was right, then we got, got to keep pressing on towards the center of the lake. I'd say follow the water. Or the wetter it gets, the deeper we are under the lake. Thanks, Parker. That's a solid lead. Just happy to do what I can. Are you sure that freeing Josephine is the best idea? Like, even if we can pull it off, pull that off, how do we know it'll help? I have to believe that Josephine... The real Josephine is still in there somewhere. If we can set her free and end her suffering, then maybe she'll be able to come back to us. It's not a sure thing, but it's the best plan we've got. Silence falls over the chamber as everyone everyone seals themselves for what comes next. Well, I guess that means we should head out. Yeah, here goes nothing. You all stand and start to file towards the door. A glimmer out of the corner of your eye catches your attention and your step falters. Huh? Everything okay? Yeah, I thought I just, I just thought I saw. You turn to find a bald, oh no. <sighs> it holds an earth shattering revelation. Fine. Hey guys, can you give me a minute? I need to check something out real quick. Treat the bottle. Start to read. I don't want to read all this. 
Yeah, journal itching missing. So blah, blah 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 blah. Dear Arthur, I hope you're doing well. I rhymed this with a smuggled pencil in a concrete room. Because of you, because you betrayed me. You told them you told them you told those greedy at the development group about the power and now they wanted blah blah blah. Come on. Didn't you? Of course you did. You idiot. You absolute coward. Well, do you know what happens next? Because I do. They're going to use me, Arthur. They're going to take the ritual I created to protect us and twist it into something dark. Something wrong. They'll make me into a sacrifice. They're conduit to the power, and if I resist, they'll kill her. And on and on the off chance you happen to locate your spine, they'll kill you too. But we both know there's no risk that is there. I'm coming back for them, Arthur. And I'm coming back for you. Coming back for them all. I'm going back for them, Arthur. I'm coming back for all of them. I'm coming back for you. Love, Josephine. I'm sorry. I, I don't know. Losing your trembling hands. Grandpa, he... He... He lied to me. How could he... How could he? He promised me he was done lying. But that was probably a lie, too. Hey, um, Anthony? Oh, hey. You have to shove the paper into your pocket. Is, um, is everything okay? You look a little... Everything's fine. Sorry about the hold up. I'm ready to go. Okay, as long as you're sure. You leave the moldy... You leave the moldy but safe room behind, walking out into the dark, lonely tunnels and drifting further into the this is of the dam. Oh boy! You creep along the narrow tunnel as quietly as you can, shuffling single file beside the thin stream of water that covered the sound of your footfalls. Do you think we're going the right way? No idea. No idea. This place is like more confusing version. Of portal, except without the fun British robot. Don't worry, we're getting closer. How can you tell? Look at the water flow. It gets heavier the farther we go, just like I said it would. Carry on in silence for a while longer until you make out the sounds of fighting up ahead. Great. You peek around the corner and I see a gang of cultists trying to fend off a pack of howling creatures. Quick, get back, get back. You group half these scaries back into the narrow tunnels. What do we do? We'll flank them and take them by surprise. The tunnel splits up ahead. Half of us will take the left, and the other half will take the right. That's actually a good idea. Don't sound so surprised. Merit badge, I have my pet. So let's do this. Alright, let's go. Your group explodes into the wide tunnel, approaching from other either end. Approaching from either end, the, the cultists and beasts alike turn to you in shock. It's them. Get a running elk creature gallops from from behind, impaling the man by the antlers. Holy! Shaking the corpse free, it of its antlers, the elf turns its attention to, on you. With a with a deaf motion, you step to the side as it charges, ramming your elbow on well, down on the back of its neck. Brittle bones crack, and the sweeter slumps to the water, motionless. Too slow. Before you have a chance to catch your breath, a woman tackles you into the water, her hands clapping around your throat. You're not getting away again. You try to grasp for air, but the grip around your throat only tightens, making your head spin. Summoning all your strength, you reach up and claw the woman across the ice. Oh, get off me! 
She lets you go to cradle her, her injured face. You kick her away. She lands still, screaming in the bloodied waters. Shakingly, you get f you get to your feet and look around. Your friends, having taken down a few opponents of their own, watch as howling creatures chase the remaining cultists into the darkness. See, I knew we could do it. Come on, let's get out of here before more people or things show up to kill us. Right behind you, Anthony. After another long slog through casually deep beating water, you and your friends find yourselves at a dead end. Ugh, seriously? I thought you said we were going the right way. It should be the right way. Hey guys, look. Look where Amogan is pointing and find obscured by a network of pipes, two bulkhead doors at the tunnel's end. Above the right hand door is a rusted plague engraved with depressurization chamber and and above the other one is a viewing chamber. Okay, I'm writing this down. Give me a give me a few seconds. Depressurization chamber and viewing chamber. I I can't believe it. We found it. We really found it. A pain howl shudders through the tunnels, shaking concrete, dust, and icy water loose from the ceiling. And not a moment too soon. Come on, let's get this door open. We're running out of time. Parker steps Parker steps up and yanks on the hand wheel he's found and able to get it to turn. Hey, can someone go might give me a hand with this? Sure. Then he walks forward, gripping the hand wheel in both hands and turning it with all her strength, but the wheel doesn't budge. Crap, it's stuck or something. Then he pulls the scene stone from her pocket and gives the door a once over. See anything? Well, whatever's got it shut isn't magical. That's good for us, at least. Imogen wipes writes grime away from the porthole in the door. I think I might know why it won't open. You squeeze beside her and through the porthole all you see you see is all you see is dark murky water from the from floor to ceiling. It's flooded. The water pressure must be keeping the door sealed. You walk to the door door marked depressurization chamber. The chamber beyond is flood beyond is half flooded and this door won't open either. There must be some way to drain the water. You step back looking around and notice three valves set onto one onto pipes between the two doors. A blue veil, a red veil. Look for the blue veil. Hey, come look at this look at these. What do you think they're for? Wait, wait, wait. I know what these do. You do? See how they're connected to the pipes leading out of the chambers? These valves must be the re for redistributing water from chamber to chamber. If we can figure out the right combination, we can drain all the water out of the viewing chamber and open the door. Tom, you're a genius. Based on the pipe's configuration, I'd say the green veil. I'd say the green veil empathize water from the or from the viewing chamber into the pressure station. The blue moves water. Moves water. The blue moves water from the depressurized chamber to the viewing chamber and the red empathizes water 
Oh, red. Don't you think you can crack it, Anthony? That all sounded like Greek to me. Yeah. First green. You watch the wire. You watch this wire drains from the viewing chamber beside it. The depression fills and fills until this, the water reaches the ceiling. Mogan eagerly rushes forward to the looking. Oh, it's still it's still half full. Why it stopped? The depressurized chamber is full. The water doesn't have anywhere else to go. So we need to find somewhere else to empty the rest of the water. So blue. You hear a groan of pipes look through into the depressed depressed. You hurry back to the viewing chamber and watch it fills back up to the ceiling, leaving the. Uh, so we're right back where we started. Full viewing chamber, half depressurization chamber. Oh, Jesus! With a creaking pipe, with a creeping creaking of pipes. The, v the water drains from the viewing chamber and begins flooding your tunnel from an open-mouthed pipe in the ceiling. Uh, I don't think that was right. There's too much water. It's gonna in the viewing chamber. It's gonna the water. The water level rises quickly over your head. Well, water fills your fills your lungs, signaling as the life. Is sapped from your body and you're plunged into darkness. You have. Oh, come on! Jeez. Oh, oh, crap. I know, I know. <sighs> so we move it from here. Oh, come on! I'm gonna be stuck on this thing! I just mind. I hate this. Yeah. You wade forward to hear the. Oh. It's empty! We did it! Oh, thank goodness. No, Anthony, you did it. And you should be proud of yourself. Yeah, doing it twice. You get a solid grip on the hand wheel and turn it and with all your might. With a satisfying hiss, you hear the door unseal and the water all around you pushes inward. All right, time to see what's inside. What the heck is this? You walk, you all walk slowly into the room, feet splashing in the shallows of puddles as you look up at the stairs. Thank goodness, looks like we beat the society here. Parker heaves the door shut with his shoulder and spins the inner... Re inner re Let's hope that will slow him down, at least a little. Your group climbs the, creek, climbs the creaking metal steps to the bulkhead door, and, and you peer through the foggy porthole. There's another room. It looks like an airlock. You put both hands on the hand wheel, try to spin it to no avail. This one's stuck too. Do we have to do this thing over again? I think we just need more leverage. Maybe there's a loose pipe or a crowbar around here somewhere. Everyone fans out searching the waterlogged room with it. Take a moment to look at them, then back at the door, the last obstacle before reaching Josephine. I might have another chance to talk to them. Anything I need to say, I should say it now. 
This is your last chance to have a one-on-one -on -one with a person, person of, of your choosing before the final battle, and your last chance to boost their nerve. You're approaching Mugget as she peers behind a delicate piece of equipment. Oh, hey, Anthony, come to help me look. I have a, I'm having a hard time seeing with all this water on my glasses, and everything's wet, and it's not like I can dry them with anything. Sorry, that's a bummer. I was actually wondering if we could go somewhere private to talk. Oh, sure. You walk to the other end of the massive chamber and behind a wall, ancient machinery. It's not exactly cozy, but it is secluded. Before you get a chance to say anything, Mogan wrings her hands something clearly on her mind. I, I don't know how to say this, so I'll just come right out and say it. Aww, I love you. What? That's okay, right? Why wouldn't it be? That's a relief. I wasn't sure how you might react. I thought you might be mad at me or something. I just wanted to get it out now since we don't know if we're, well, since we don't know what's going to happen. Oh, but, oh, but you had something you wanted to tell me? Was it? What was it? I'm in love with you, too. Oh my god, you mean it? More than I've ever meant anything. Bungu pulls you into a tight embrace. I'm so happy. I don't think I've ever been this happy in my entire life. I knew you were special the moment I saw you. I had a feeling deep down that we were going to fall in love. I just knew it. Was there something else you wanted to ask me? Not ask necessarily, but I also wanted to... A, fu a furious blush blooms across the mother's cheeks. Is that alright? She nods her head vigorously and you gently cup her smooth cheek in one hand. You close the short distance between you and your lips meet hers. You hold her close, pouring your soul into the kiss. Mm. When you pull back, her eyes are half-lidded and dazed. Wow. Wow, indeed. You hear a clatter of both, and both your heads snap up, startled. Hey, guys, I found something we can use. I guess that's it. Our time's up. Are you are you ready to finish this? I I don't know, but I'm going to finish it anyway, right beside you. You hold out your hand and Imoga takes it, your fingers in your twine. Right. That's the spirit. You squeeze it out from behind the concealing machinery and make your way back to the others. When they're clustered around the airlock door again, you all look at the long, sturdy metal rod Tom's holding. That certainly looks like it, like it'll do the trick. Tom wedges the pole between the hand and Will's spokes. It sticks out enough on both ends for everyone to get a grip on. Ready? Three, two, one, push! Each of you, you throws your entire weight behind the bar. After a long moment, you hear the you hear the screech of metal, and the hard hand wheel up turns. You're going. We're almost there. Something inside the door clanks, and when it swings open, reveals the small airlock and the door on the other side. Cool. So, what do we do now? You stare at the door, the murky darkness beyond the porthole, then you step into the airlock. Close the door. Do what now? 
I got to be the one to go out there. We all know that. So you guys close the door and I'll open the hatch to the lake bed. But the airlock will, fl will flood. That's the point. You gotta be kidding me, Anthony. You don't have any equipment, nothing to help you breathe. No way way to get back it. And you hear a metallic pounding turn to see, f to see the faces of cultists pressed against the tunnel door's portal. Oh no, they're here. There's a squeal as the cultists begin turning the handwheel just seconds away from unlocking it. We're out of time. It has to be be this it has to be this way and it has to be me Parker steps forward to grip your shoulder tightening his face solemn we'll cover you put your hand over his and squeeze back I can do this just hold them off as long as you can we will please be careful thank you Danny Parker backs out of the airlock and puts his hands on the door. You look at all your friends' faces of, for what might be the, be the last time. Give them a shaky smile. Well, I guess I'll see you on the other side. You stand rigid as the airlock door swings shut with a resounding thud, leaving you alone. Here goes nothing. You slow hard, you walk to the hatch and spin the hand wheel. Water forces the hatch open, a moment later streaming into the airlock. The water is a horrifying pressure on top of you, threatening to crush the life from your body. I'm coming, Josephine. Knowing your courage, you've pushed forward through the, through the doorway and into the lake beyond. You struggle through... Is this... This is a sea forest. You struggle through the water that's thick with slit and plant with making nearly impossible to see. Josephine's body has to has got to be around here somewhere. Your limbs begin to ache. You're suddenly aware, very aware of your lim limited air supply and the crushing weight of the w water above you. A dark shape suddenly comes darting out of the shadows and you throw your hands up to protect your face. But then you feel a gentle nudge against your hands and pull them away to find... Skipper! The sea otter! She spins urgently around you, brushing up against your sides and pushing your, her nose against your cheek. What is it, girl? What are you trying to tell me? With a flick of her tail, she darts a few feet ahead, then turns to look back at you. I hope you know where you're going. You follow her through thick tangles of kelp, fleeing in your way along the lake bed. Soon, you see something glowing up ahead. Is that? You push forward, squinting as the light glows brighter and brighter, and as your eyes adjust to the glare, you see Josephine? Whoa, Josephine, clever girl, you hold out your hand and Skipper butts her head eagerly against her, your palm, and then just as quickly as she appeared, she vanishes off into the cloudy depths. You pull yourself toward Josephine's skeleton nailed to the lake bed with weathered metal spikes. This is it. I know what I have to do. You reach out for the nearest spike. But the second you touch it, touch it, a piercing ear rating screen seems to shake the water all around you. Oh no. Two burning eyes flare into the dark in the darkness, streaking forward you like flaming arrows. Desperately, you wrap both your hands around the spike and pull it, but it won't budge. As a howling drizzle bears down on you, you brace your feet against the lake bed and pull with all your might, feeling the spike start to shift. Come on! 
All at once, the spike comes free. You cringe, bracing yourself for the, for the attack. You know it's seconds away, but it never comes. You look up to find Josephine hovering a few feet in front of you, staring at the spike in your hands. It's working. Tossing the first spike aside, you grab a hold of the of another and tearing free. Second. Josephine watches eerily still as you drop the second spike. You reach for another lunge, aching for air. Have to finish this. You pull out the spike after spike, strengthening everything from your body. Josephine starts shifting back and forth as if holding herself back. Finally, there is only one spike left. A beauty... A beautifully engraved marlin driven and through the skeleton's chest, its runes glowing softly. That's the final spike. Your hand grips the spike just above the skeleton's own fingers, and with what feels like your last, like the last of your strength, you tear it free. Josephine screams, and a pressure wave of water slams against you, hurling back across the craggy lake bed. Stumbling helplessly through the dark, you, your battered body finally gives in, and the world fades to black around you. You crawl sluggishly back to consciousness, your ears ringing. <sighs> what happened? You cough up water and roll onto your side, every muscle in your body aching. Your eyes begin to adjust you realize you're back in the viewing chamber lying at the bottom of the stairs. How? You look at the other side of the chamber and see your friends lo locked in battle with the society. Just leave us alone. Imoga, stop this foolishness at once. The ritual has to be done. Stand down, old man. You can't win this. You're the one on the losing side, little girl. Watch out! Tom shoves Parker out of the way, only to get cuffed painfully in the side. Tom! Shouldn't have given up, given up when I gave you the chance, boy. Giving up for quit, giving up for quitters. You're the you're the one who taught me that. You push yourself to your feet and are and are nearly overcome with dizziness, grimacing. You take a few staggered steps forward. I have to help them. Shuffling forward, your toes bumping into something heavy beneath the water. You look down and see. But how? As you stare at the spike, you feel a voice in your head calling out to you, begging you to pick it up. The Marlin Spike is a powerful weapon that will give you a strong advantage against the cult and will unlock the last rune on the locked on the cabin. All right. Let's pick it up and see what we keep, what we have. And that's the last one. The spike was the last item we we were we were looking for. Now what is this? Now what is this thing? You've collected the fifth ruined. Energy surges up into you, filling your tire your tired limbs with vent and clearing your head. What? What is this thing? Yeah! Seeing you standing, a cultist comes lunging at you, stun baton extended. You blindly thrust out the marlin spike and feel it sink into the man's shoulder. You watch as sickly black veins pulse out from the wound and up to the side of his face. What in the... He stumbles away from you, coughing a black flex of spittle and sinking to his knees. What... What did you do to me? I... I don't know. You step around the wicked cultist and run forward into the fray. Ha! Ah. You slash the marlin spike across, across the back of the cultist, pinning Tom. Just like before, black veins stand out of her skin, and she crumples to the ground in a coughing fit. Whoa. Tom, I'll help Imogen. You go get Danny out of trouble, got it? I'm on it. 
As Tom sprints away, you reach a Mogan where she's being restrained by her father. Let her go. My God, is that? Vincent takes a look at the Marlin Spike you're brandishing and releases a Mogan. Mogan runs to you, hugging you fiercely. Anthony, you're okay. We were so worried. We were out there for so long and... You foolish child. You have no idea what that artifact is capable of. It's got you scared, and that's all I need to know. Again, you still have... You still got those bubbles? You bet. Bolas. I said bubbles. Mogan, Abigail, Westcott, don't you dare. Sorry, Dad. With an overhead swing, Imogen launches the bolas into the air. They wrap several times around Vincent, pinning his arms to the side. Imogen! Nearby, Denny narrowly avoids a blow from the dirt creature's poltergeist fist. You're not getting me this time, dirtbag. Get down! Denny ducks just as Tom swings his wrench over, to, over her head, impacting the dirt monster at, the, at its elbow. And it explodes, leaving nothing but a slump, but a stumped lump for its left arm. What's wrong, Stoney? What's wrong, Stoney? Need a hand? Anthony! You look over to find Parker grappling with Kelly. On my way. As you near, you slash out with the Marlin Spike. He lets go of Parker at once, cradling his gashed arm as blackness spreads across the wound. What's going on? What What have you done? Thanks for the assist. Anytime. Craig, stop lying and get that spi Marlin Spike away from him. Yes, boss. The creature takes long, quick steps. You do the, re the rest of the cultists in the room. You hold the Marlin Spike out in front of you like a shield. Get back, I'm warning you. There's a sudden reading sound at the and the door at the top of the stairs flies open, water streaming in. What? Josephine flows out of the water, her engulfed entangled her tangled hair streaming behind her. She points at a skeletal claw at at the assembled cultists and shrieks. Kill! But, but I freed her. Why is she? From out of the water, hulking, decaying forms begin to rise. You gotta be kidding me. No, no, stay away. Get away from me. The beasts leap into action, trampling down cultists and tearing into them. The water pouring from the open door suddenly surges around Josephine. When it falls away, she's surrounded by floating marlin spikes. This is bad. Kill. Okay, I'm so confused. What's going on? With a flick of her wrists, she sends one spike flying across the chamber to bury itself in the back of a retreating cultist. Lake water continues to crash through the open hatch wave after wave flying the room. The door! We've got to get, the d get that door closed. Parker grabs Tom by the shoulder. Give me a hand. They stumble up the stairs and pull and put their full weight behind the door and try to f and try to try and force it back against the curtain current. Undead animals tear savagely into the cultists as they attempt to flee through the tunnel. Astrid, Vince, help me! A bear creature has Kelly pinned; its blood-stained muzzle tearing into the f into his flesh. Astrid pauses for. Her for a moment, exchanging a glance with her husband. I'm sorry, Abraham. Know that you served our cause admirably. And they turn away from, from him, waiting, and waiting as fast as they can through the water towards the exit. Wait, wait, Astra! You have to look away as Kelly is torn asunder by the beast's powerful jaws. Abe! Craig, clear a path. Yes, boss. The dirt construct barrels forward, its boulder-like fists ashing aside monsters and cultists alike. 
The construct manages to squeeze its massive form through the tunnel and and with an almost deli delicate hand helps Astrid over the threshold. Behind you, the airlock door finally slams shut, cutting off the flow of water. It's done. Let's get out of here. Come, Vince. We're almost out of the... Kill them. Kill them all. Josephine flings another spike across the chamber. It tears through the air like a tiny missile and... He looks down to find the spike driven straight through his heart. No. Dad! I... Vincent falls to his knees in the water and floats lifelessly upon the waves. His empty, unseeing eyes stare up at his wife. Astrid tears her shocked gaze away from her husband's corpse and looks back at Josephine with cold fury in her eyes. You'll pay for this, so help me, Josephine. I'll make sure you pay. She slams... She slams the door behind her, and Craig spins the handwheel until it sticks shut. You and your friends cluster together in the center of the chamber, surrounded by salivating beasts and corpses. Jules returns to you, then fire in her eyes, dancing, shifting. Kill. Oh, heck, she's gonna kill us. No, she isn't. Uh, you sure about that? I can get through to her. I know I can. She's free. She help us. I just need to need to help her remember who she is. That's crazy, Anthony. She's a monster. She's my grandmother. Anthony, be careful. You wait until you're standing only a few paces from oh, Spectre. Josephine. Remember who you are. She tilts her head to one side. The light within her eye sockets flicker curiously. Who I am? Yes, that's right. You're starting to remember now, aren't you? You're starting to... Ah, ah great. Josephine's clawed hand slashes out, backhanding you across the room. You back, your back slams against the wall, knocking all the air from your lungs. You slump limp, limply into the water, tasting blood in your mouth. Anthony, stop. There's no humanity left in her. We've got to get out of here before she tears you apart. But before you can respond, Josephine is there, her claws wrapped around your throat, lifting you out of the water. The burning blue-green pits of her blaze close enough to sight your eyelashes. I've got to try one last time. It's the only thing I can do. Uh, they can't hurt you anymore? Hurts? Josephine stares at you for a long, agonizing moment as if searching for something. Then you feel the hold on your throat slacken, and you slide to the water, wheezing and coughing. <coughs> I remember. She drifts away from you, her form shimmering and indulgently. What's happening? I don't know. Okay, what's happening now? Whoa! Is that you? The beautiful transcluded woman glides toward you and her cold but surprisingly gentle hand rests on your cheek. You look just like Mary. Glowing tears begin to run down her face and you feel tears running down yours. How, how long was I like that? How long was I a monster? About 50 years. I think... How much do you remember? I remember being stabbed and in the heart with my own ritual marlin spike and being tossed into the river. After that, not much. I was so full of rage I couldn't think. I... I remember hurting people. I remember wanting to hurt people. 
That's all in the past now. You're free, Grandma Josephine. Josephine smiles, wrapping you in a hug that feels like a cool breeze against your skin. I think I remember seeing you in the water. So wonderfully brave. I wish I could have been there to watch you grow up. I just wish Mom could have lived to see this. She'd be so happy to, f to know you're finally. Josephine pulls back, holding you in at arm's length. Her hands on your shoulders are suddenly very cold. Lived? I... Oh, oh great. Oh, great. She's going to turn mad again. I, I thought... I thought somehow you knew. She's... She's dead. My baby is dead? I'm so sorry. I didn't mean for you, you to find out of this way. It must be... Josephine's hands drop to her sides, clenching into fists. The water in the chamber begins to churn, forming erratic peaks and maelstrom all around you. Kill them. Oh no. Oh no. Stay with me, Josephine. Don't let the monster take over again. Remember who you are. Oh. Oh, I remember. I remember. Oh. <laughs> I remember Astrid stabbing me in the heart. I remember the power burning me from the inside. I remember the man I thought I loved betraying me. It's time for Arthur to pay. It's time for old. Um, it's time they all pay for what they did to me and my little girl. Sophie rises, her whole form crackling with blue flames and streaks upwards, passing straight through the concrete ceiling. Um, Anthony. Your friend sloshed through the water towards you while you stand mudly, staring at the place where Josephine disappeared. Anthony, are you alright? Say something. What have I done? What have I done? Well, ugh. Chapter 14 complete. On edge. Tough as nails. Tough as nails. Coping. Tough as nails. Tough as nails. Now, can we see what this thing is? Or next week? Next week, then. Okay. I can't believe this. We just had to mention that... We just had to mention that that her child was dead, was killed, and now she's going to go on a rampage. Nice. By the way, that ghost looked kind of nice, even though she was he was the main character's grandmother. But um, uh, this was really. Now we have to fight her again. We just had to mention that. Great. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you guys give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new to my channel. Share it with your friends. Comment below what you think of the video. If you want to get notified of all the videos that I put up on my channel, go hit the notification button next to the subscribe button. I'll see you all in the next video.